Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Imagine, the Greater Houston Partnership's 2013 Annual Meeting. Please rise for the singing of our national anthem, performed by Neek Doyle with Jetspeed Entertainment. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous lights or the ramparts we watched they're so gallantly streaming and the That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of green and the Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Pastor Rudy Rasmus of St. John's Downtown. Let us pray. Fountain of life, light, and truth. You have so created us that we realize in the depths of our beings that none of us is an island and that none of us wants to walk alone. We have experienced that our hearts are restless until they rest in you and in one another. Therefore, we thank you for all who have assembled in this place and pray that our being together will enhance each of our lives and our community. Amen. Please welcome the CEO of the Greater Houston Partnership, Bob Harvey. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Greater Houston Partnership 2013 Annual Meeting. I'm Bob Harvey, President and CEO, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. I want to thank Pastor Rudy Rasmus for leading today's invocation. Pastor Rudy, as he's known to his congregation, is co-pastor with his wife Juanita at St. John's United Methodist Church, just about a mile from here in the heart of downtown. When Pastor Rudy arrived at St. John's more than 20 years ago, there were only nine members of his congregation. Today, his parish counts more than 9,000 members, a third of whom are homeless men and women. So thank you for joining us today, Pastor Rudy. Thank you for all that you do for our community. And now we have an important recognition video we'd like to share with you. Please take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, the generous financial support of our sponsors is an essential component to the work of the Greater Houston Partnership. Their sponsorship, along with your patronage of these excellent companies, allows us to continue to be the voice of the business community in the 10 county Houston region. Their dollars have also made today's annual meeting possible. Please join me in thanking our executive level sponsors. AT&T, BP America, Centerpoint Energy, Chevron, Exxon Mobil, JP Morgan Chase, Reliant and NRG Company, 
Shell Oil Company. Our platinum level sponsors include Odebrecht USA, Silver level sponsors are Bank of America, Blue Lands, Bracewell and Giuliani LLP, Camden Property Trust, NAI Houston, Sanchez Oil and Gas Corporation, Spectra Energy, Cisco Corporation, The Friedkin Group, and WCW International Incorporated. Our bronze level sponsors, who include Amogee Bank, Andrews Kurth LLP, Bud Light Silver Eagle Distributors LP, Capital One, Centerpoint Energy, Comerica Bank, Deloitte, Ernst & Young LLP, Gensler, Haynes & Boone LLP, Jones Lang LaSalle, Lock Lord LLP, Marathon Oil Corporation, Price Waterhouse Coopers, Texas Capital Bank, Trustmark National Bank, UTMB Health, and Wells Fargo. Underwriter for the Networking Cafe, Toshiba International Corp. Also, thanks to our staging partner, JSAV, and our production partner since 2006, Vision Production Group. As we extend a big thank you to each of this year's sponsors and underwriters, let's give them a big round of applause for everything they do to make GHP and the Houston region more successful. The Greater Houston Partnership would like to express sincere appreciation to the members of Houston's Consular Corps for everything they do to nurture positive relations between the Houston region and the countries they represent. Their leadership is invaluable to building and maintaining the international relationships necessary to make our region a leading gateway to global markets. The Greater Houston Partnership would also like to acknowledge our elected officials, the men and women who represent Houston at the local, state, and federal level. Strong public policy is key to economic development, and we look forward to working with all of our elected officials in 2013. As was mentioned on the video, we want to thank the 92 members of our Consular Corps who facilitate our efforts to increase foreign trade and capital investment. Could we have the members of our Consular Corps or their representatives please stand so that we may acknowledge you? And of course, we want to recognize and thank our elected officials who are so instrumental in advancing our public policy agenda. These public servants work tirelessly at the local, state, and federal level to address the needs of our fast-growing region. Could I please have our elected officials or their representatives stand so that we may recognize you as well? Now I'd also like to take a moment to thank the men and women who served GHP in 2012 on our executive committee or our board of directors. Could everyone who served on the executive committee or the board of directors in 2012 please stand so that we may recognize you. Now we'll take a brief intermission to allow you to enjoy your lunch. The program will resume in about 20 minutes. Thank you. Well, it's now my pleasure, and indeed it's my honor, to introduce our 2012 chairman, Mr. Tony Chase. Now, I was going to say quickly that you'll recognize Tony. He's the one with the big smile on his face today. Now, Tony's a rare individual. He's an entrepreneur, he's a businessman, he's an attorney, professor, community leader, and more. Tony was an honors graduate at Harvard College. 
He then received a law degree from Harvard Law School, and for good measure, he stuck around for an MBA from the Harvard Business School. Tony is the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Chase Source and Chase Source Real Estate Services. He previously served as Chairman and CEO of Chase Com until the company was sold to AT&T in December 2007. During his tenure with Chasecom, Chasecom was consistently ranked one of the country's largest minority-owned companies. Tony was also one of the founders of Cricket, a national mobile services provider. I hope I get this right, Tony, but the company of origin was Chase Telecommunications, which was bought by Leap Wireless, a Qualcomm subsidiary, that served the first Cricket markets and Tony served on the board of directors for, for Leap Wireless for several years when it was spun off. Tony has also found time to be a tenured professor of law at the University of Houston Law Center, where he began teaching in 1990. He's a member of the American Bar Association and the State Bar of Texas. Tony also makes time to serve as a director of Western Gas Resources and Sarepta Therapeutics. He's also a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. And if that wasn't enough, he generously gives his time to organizations such as the Houston Zoo Development Board and the Texas Medical Center. Tony's also an Eagle Scout. That's right. I've had the pleasure of working with Tony these last several months, and I can attest to the fact that he has devoted an extraordinary amount of time and energy to shaping the future of the partnership. It is my pleasure to introduce our 2012 chairman, Mr. Tony Chase. Thanks, Bob. I am happy today. <laughs> Before I give my remarks, we have an important business item to conduct. That is the election of new board members. Nominees for board membership were solicited from Greater Houston Partnership companies. Our nominating committee was responsible for narrowing the list. After approval by the partnership's current board, a proxy form with the list of the 2013 nominees was sent to each partnership member company. The proxies received are sufficient for a quorum to elect our new directors. In the program sent to you yesterday and on the screen in front of you today is a list of the nominees. I would like to ask those members of the 2013 slate of board nominees to please stand to be recognized. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Each member company is entitled to one vote. All those in favor of the nominees as listed, please say aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The nominees stand confirmed. Please join me in welcoming the new directors of the Greater Houston Partnership. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending GHP's 2013 annual meeting. Last year, I was eager to speak with you about four policy issues critical to the Houston region, education, transportation, natural gas, and small business. I'm very pleased to report that GHP tackled key issues of the day in each of those areas. In education, the partnership strongly supported the HISD and Houston Community College bond referenda to ensure the continued success and excellence of both education organizations and the 280,000 students they collectively serve. We also took an important step in refining our Opportunity Houston 2.0 campaign to ensure that workforce development for the first time is a pivotal part of our efforts from 2014 to 2020. 
As many of you know firsthand, our business sector in Houston needs skilled workers to continue to grow. We are excited that GHP will be a part of making this happen. Transportation was also a top priority for the partnership in 2012. The organization has long held that our airports, ports, and roadways are the envy of other major metropolitan areas. As such, they deserve our continuous attention. In 2012, GHP played a key role in promoting an expanded airport system by supporting international air services from Hobby Airport and committing to fight for increased federal funding for U.S. Customs resources, which are shared by the ports and the airports. GHP was also a vocal and aggressive proponent for a long-term federal transportation reauthorization bill to help fund our roadways and during last year's debate help secure funding for our ports. We also work very closely with local officials, officials to support a new general mobility program that will advance the region's short-term regional transportation needs and also allow for progress as it relates to our long-term transportation goals. In 2012, energy issues remain top of mind. At this meeting last year, we started a very important conversation about natural gas. Since then, the country and the world have become increasingly interested in natural gas and what it will mean for our economy and U.S. energy independence. I'm also pleased to report that GHP kept its commitment to small business owners in 2012. With help from many of the people in this room, GHP launched the Small Business Resource Center to assist members who want to find new ways to save money and grow their business. We also continued our support of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Initiative, a program that continues to receive national recognition for its successful approach to developing business acumen and creating access to capital. This was all great work for the partnership. It illustrates our long-term commitment to key areas, education, transportation, and energy. And it shows our willingness to tackle tough issues and think critically about what we need for Houston. Unlike any other time in recent history, Houston is poised to take center stage in several important respects. Today, when people talk about jobs creation, they cannot avoid talking about Houston. By November 2012, Houston's employment reached 2,642,900 jobs. That's 15,000 jobs past the previous peak reached in 2008. Today, not only that, today that employment base is growing at 3.2% annually, the fastest growth rate among all major metropolitan areas in the United States. When people look across the country at all of the major metropolitan areas and they compare home prices, they can't avoid talking about Houston. Houston is the only major metropolitan area where home values have not only recovered, but are now above their pre-recession levels. And since 2012, I'm very proud to say that Houston's cool factor has improved dramatically. In March 2012, Site Selection Magazine rated Houston the top metro area for business expansion. Last July, Forbes magazine proclaimed Houston as America's coolest city. And just two weeks ago, none other than the New York Times ranked Houston number seven among the top places to visit in the world. And we were the only American city 
in the top 10. Those of you who know me know that I'm a native Houstonian and that I love this region as it continues to succeed and that people across the country and around the world are watching to see what Houston will become. Which leads me to my last point. In 2012, we worked through many issues and we considered these accolades. We thought about Houston and we thought about the partnership and whether it was doing enough. Was it keeping up with Houston? Was it having the impact that it needed to have on the biggest issues of the day? It took some soul searching, but ultimately we concluded that we were not. After discussions with our members, business leaders, and partners, we started to see a new model for GHP, one that's consistent with our long history in the community, and one that allows us to make a major positive impact on this region. We started to see a model that would effectively use the talents of all members of the organization, including the CEO, the executive committee, and the board of directors. We started to see a model that would help GHP to effectively look beyond any given calendar year as it attacks our region's most important economic development and policy issues. Robert Kennedy once said, there are those who look at things the way they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. I hope you share this sentiment and I hope you take a moment today to think about how it applies to Houston, the Greater Houston Partnership, and to you. This organization is committed to Houston. We are committed to its members and we hope each of you will play a role in helping us define the new model and the new goals for this great organization. Before I leave you today, I want to thank my Vice Chairman, Mr. David McClanahan, for his help in this very busy year. I also want to thank former Chairs Larry Kellner, who selected me for this job, I still like him, <laughs> and Pat Oxford, as well as the 2012 Executive Committee and Board of Directors. These groups, along with our committees, task forces, and members, ensured we had a successful year. I should also thank specifically the staff of the partnership, which in a year of change performed amazingly well. I can't forget also to thank the staff at Chase Source who took on extra responsibilities to allow me to take on this charge and delivered the best year that we have ever had. So thank you very much. <laughs> Last, but certainly not least, I can't forget to thank my wife, Dina, who really bore the brunt of this sacrifice um, and, and did it with such grace and class. And I appreciate that and understand. It. I also want to recognize my mother, who's here today, my beloved mother, Drucy Chase, and my five-year-old daughter, Kat. Hi, Kat. Hi, baby. 2012 was the year of transition for the Chase family. We lost our patriarch, my father, John Chase. Those of you who knew him know that he was a towering figure in this community and in my life. I wouldn't be who I am today without him, and I thank him for his guidance and support throughout his life and after. 
That concludes my thank yous. As my last act as your chairman, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce my successor. I had the great pleasure of working closely with him this past year, and I am certain the partnership is in very good hands. David McClanahan is president and CEO of Centerpoint Energy. He is one of the rare individuals that has spent his entire business career with the same company. He started at what was then Houston Lighting and Power in 1972, and he ultimately rose to be president and chief operating officer. He also served in various leadership roles at Houston Industries and Reliant Energy before assuming his current role when Centerpoint was formed as an independent company in 2002. Outside his day job, David has taken an active role in a number of other organizations, having served as chairman of the board of the University of St. Thomas, Junior Achievement of Southeast Texas, the United Way of Greater Houston, and the Gulf Coast Regional Blood Center. He also serves on the board of directors of the American Gas Association which he chaired in 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. David McClanahan, your 2013 chairman. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Uh, I've asked Tony to stay up here for just a moment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Tony has put in an enormous amount of time and effort for this organization. His determination to rethink the way the partnership operates has brought a new energy to everything we are doing. He has been a steady hand in difficult situations and the driving force behind our accomplishments in 2012. He's influenced many of the ways the partnership conducts its business. On behalf of the Greater Houston Partnership and the entire Houston region, I want to thank Tony's family and his company for allowing us to borrow him during the year. And Tony, I want to thank you for everything that you've done for the partnership and the Houston region. In recognition of your leadership and your accomplishments, it is my pleasure and honor to present you with the Bob Onstead Award. Well, one more round of applause uh, for Tony Chase, the outgoing chairman. It's an honor to be with all of you today as we begin a new stage of the journey of the Greater Houston Partnership. Each year a new chair takes office, but it is important that each new chair not start over. The partnership must have a clear and consistent vision of the future of our region. It is up to those of us fortunate enough to hold leadership positions to see that the Greater Houston Partnerships continues to make progress in achieving that vision. Having a clear and consistent vision doesn't mean the rejection of new ideas or a fear of making mid-course adjustments. Mid-course adjustments are important, but they are not always easy whether the adjustment appears slight or significant. Tony had the foresight to realize that if the Houston region is to become what we all imagine it can be, some mid-course corrections needed to be made, and the partnership's role needs to change. The theme for this gathering is imagine. This obviously isn't your typical theme for a partnership event, 
and certainly not for our annual meeting. But Houston and Houstonians have a long history of imagining great things and then rolling up their sleeves and making those things a reality. And when Houston imagines the future, we are not just imagining next year. We are imagining the long-term future of our community. Think about the Allen brothers in 1836, who imagined the great city along the Gulf Coast that would one day rival New Orleans. Think about Anthony Lucas, who believed there was oil in the ground only 90 miles from here at Spindletop that would transform the Houston region into the energy capital of the world. Think about the civic leaders in the early part of the 20th century who envisioned transforming shallow Buffalo Bio into a port that could become one of the world's largest. Think, think about Monroe Dunaway Anderson, whose foundation in 1945 provided the vision and seed money for what would become, some 70 years later, the world's largest medical center. Think about the men and women who came to this community in answer to President John F. Kennedy's challenge to put a man on the moon, who imagined not only the successful completion of that endeavor, but a great aerospace complex that would become home to NASA's mission control. Think about Roy Hoffines, who conceived the world's first dome stadium and changed the world of sports forever. Each of these leaders had a, great, had a vision of future greatness, but we would remember none of them if they had not been committed to their ideas and ready to work to make their vision a reality. We know the future Houston we imagine will not just happen. We must identify those things that are important to our community. Education for our children and grandchildren. The basic infrastructure necessary for the economic success of our region. The health and well-being of our fellow citizens. We have a duty and a responsibility not just to imagine the realization of these priorities, but to incorporate that imagination into achievable long-term plans and then work to make what we imagine a reality, the Houston of the future. The partnership is in a unique position to take a leadership role in imagining and then planning for the great metropolis we want to create. When we imagine the Houston of tomorrow, we should think about Houston in the context of the great cities of our times. We start with a great base, the fourth largest city in the United States, the most diverse city in the United States, and the energy capital of the world. But to do more, we need both imagination and inspiration. Now, what does that mean? Well. We have a perfect example right here in Houston. In 1907, Edgar Odell Lovett, the first president of the Rice Institute, began his tenure by touring 78 academic institutions around the world to find the ideal formula for building a world-class academic institution. I doubt that there is a person in the room who would argue with the success he achieved. Lovett got it right by finding inspiration in the best. Similarly, we should look at the great cities of the world and cities who are great at certain things and gain insight and inspiration from them. Clearly, we have a much more established foundation from which to work than Edgar Lovett did in 1907. As part of this exploration process to find great examples which to follow, GHP is taking part in the Global Cities Initiative, sponsored by the Brookings Institute and J.P. Morgan Chase. This program is aimed at helping metropolitan areas in the United States strengthen their regional economies by becoming more competitive in the global marketplace. Our participation will allow us the opportunity to learn what some of the great cities in the world are doing to become 
and remain competitive in the global economy. We are fortunate to have a strong energy sector to anchor this region. We are viewed by many as the energy capital of the world. But we should challenge ourselves to imagine a future where we've broadened what energy means to include all forms of energy, where people come from all over the world to learn not just about oil and gas, but other forms of energy, including ones that today we can only imagine. We are also home to the largest medical complex in the world, one that we are all proud of. But think of a future where we talk about health care in the same way we talk about energy. Houston, Texas, the health care capital of the world. It has a nice ring to it. It's not hard to imagine a future where we lead the world in health education, medical delivery, and research. One of our greatest strengths as a region is the fact that we have become a distribution and logistics hub for many of the world's largest companies. This is no accident. In addition to our strategic location in the middle of the United States and along the Gulf Coast, we are also home to one of the largest ports in America and the beneficiaries of a railroad system our forefathers were wise to build and expand. These are just two parts of our multimodal transportation system. That includes a world-class airport system and expanding roadways. We must imagine ways to leverage this advantage as well as ways to meet the challenges that our continued growth and economic success places on the region's infrastructure. Perhaps most important for our children, we must envision Houston as a center for higher education anchored by two tier one universities. We must see a region where the kindergarten through 12th grade education system gives every single child the same opportunity to succeed making good on our promise uh, to, to future generations to afford them the same opportunities we had. And where our outstanding universities and community colleges provide a greater path to upward mobility. We should imagine a region where people come from around the world to learn the technical skills necessary to compete. Lastly, let's imagine a truly global city where we've parlayed our ethnic diversity into rich ties with other global communities. Houston has been called an example of what this country will look like in the next 50 years. We should embrace that diversity and use it to our benefit as we expand existing markets and open new ones. In order to set long-term priorities, we need to determine what's really important to this region and to the business community of this region. We need real, achievable, long-term plans. Of course, this won't, these plans won't be accomplished in one year. But my goal is for the partnership to move away from single-year plans toward a long, longer-term initiatives that we must work toward achieving each and every year. I'm looking forward to working with my vice chairman, Paul Hobby who will bring his long business experience and his family's passion for Houston to the table as we work together this coming year. I also look forward to working with the members of the board and the executive committee as we make our imagination a reality. Lastly, I'm excited about collaborating with the Greater Houston Partnership staff and its leader and new president and CEO, Bob Harvey. I can't think of a better person to lead this effort than Bob. I'm confident that he is the right person to get us thinking about our long-term plans and how to achieve them. His business career has been built around helping organizations plan for the future. And his recent service to the United Way has given him a unique perspective on our region's challenges and its resources. We are fortunate to have a leader like Bob who can help direct the imagination and inspiration provided by each new chairman and each new board toward the achievement of the clear and consistent vision to which we are committed, the Houston and the Gulf Coast region of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for honoring me to serve you this coming year as your chairman. 
and please welcome Mr. Bob Harvey. You know, thank you, David. I always worry at a moment like this that when you receive those kind of accolades from the chairman and you know his speech was written by the staff, that you're a little suspicious of what was just said. Uh, but we'll, we'll move beyond that. David, I really appreciate those kind words, and I truly look forward to working with you this year. Good afternoon, everyone. It's truly a pleasure to be here and to have this chance to share some of the thoughts I have about Houston, the partnership, and our plans for 2013. Building on what David said, maybe becoming a bit more granular in the discussion. I would like all of you to know that I accepted this position for one reason, and that's because I have an overwhelming passion to make Houston a great city. And I believe the partnership has a unique opportunity to help make this happen. This is the organization that is the successor to that long line of great business and civic leaders that David referred to that have shaped the Houston community in the past. Now let me add quickly that when I say Houston, I mean the greater Houston 10 county region, that region that encompasses 6 million people. And while it's made up of distinct neighborhoods and business districts, it is truly one large economic engine and one interconnected community. No part of the region can really ignore the rest. Now we all know Houston has changed a lot over the years and the nature of civic leadership has changed right along with it but we still need an organization like the partnership that brings leaders together to dream big and to solve the issues of the day. So how do we, the partnership, get this done? Many of you have given me suggestions over the past several months on how the partnership could improve. And I want to thank you for your input, really. I also received input from McKinsey and Company, which completed a study of the partnership in November and raised a number of issues and made several key suggestions. So with the benefit of all this input, I'd like to share a few of the thoughts about the next steps we'll be taking at the partnership. First, just as Tony and David have suggested, we must build this new model for the organization that draws effectively on the strength of the staff, the strength of the board, and the strength of you, the membership. As we move away from this annual agenda set by the incoming chairman, we have the opportunity to develop a longer-term plan that, be, that can be executed by the staff and the volunteers under the direction of the board. A second priority must be expanding our membership base. We'll be seeking to secure the support of companies that were once members of the partnership, as well as companies and institutions that are new to our region. And we'll be talking about how to get these companies and all of you seriously engaged in the work of the partnership. A third priority will be to enhance the partnership's capabilities in several key areas. For example, we need to expand and better leverage our research capability to support a broader range of issues. Similarly, our policy efforts need to be more focused and more robust. Today's policy issues are simply more complicated and they take years to advance. We can do so much more in the policy arena if we target our efforts and better leverage both our members and our staff. Many of you have also told me that we need to improve our communications, both to you and with the general public. People need to know what GHP is doing, what positions we're taking, what impact we're having. Recently, we've taken steps to add capability in this area, and you'll soon be seeing the results. Finally, GHP's role with respect to what I'll call regional leadership and consensus building needs to be made an explicit pillar of the partnership. At times in the past, GHP owned this title, but we should own it all the time. This will mean building stronger relationships between the partnership, other organizations in the region, and our elected officials. It will also mean reaching out to the diverse elements of the community and, assuring, and ensuring that the partnership is not simply viewed as a downtown or large company-centric organization. But let's return to the theme of the meeting. 
How do we as the partnership participate in a community-wide effort to accomplish imagining a better Houston? I can say as a starting point that the discussions surrounding the Global Cities Initiative, sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase that David referred to, will play a part. I know that the staff from the Brookings Institution will challenge Houston to take control of its own destiny and not depend on the federal or state government. They'll also suggest that we as a community identify the priorities, strategies, and funding sources needed to make that plan a reality. Today, I'd like to focus for a moment on the role I see GHP playing. And for me, the best phrase to describe GHP's role is the one I alluded to just a moment ago, that of a regional leader and consensus builder. The partnership, in my mind, should be a leader, but not necessarily the only leader, in imagining a new future. Other groups, such as the Center for Houston's Future, should also play leadership roles. The Center's work around scenarios and their recently completed community indicator report each represent the kind of discussion starter that will be useful for building a consensus. But as I said at the outset, I believe that GHP should be the one to make the call for a regional effort and to rally its members behind such a program. No other group is better able to leverage the strengths of the business community in a regional consensus building process. Now, both McKinsey and Brookings highlight the importance of metro regions building on strengths rather than starting afresh. And as David alluded, our region has clear strengths in energy, healthcare, aerospace, IT, trading and logistics, and manufacturing that we simply must leverage. We need bold, aspirational plans to move each of these segments forward in the context of a global economy. But we can't lose sight either of the recent gains in areas we haven't traditionally viewed as strengths, such as cultural arts and tourism, technology, and commercialization. As both Tony and David have suggested, public education must be part of any discussion of our future, along with higher education, along with workforce development. We certainly need the skilled workers and professionals to support our growing economy. And the social cost of failure in education is simply immense. But I'd suggest one of our biggest opportunities, and perhaps one of our biggest challenges, may be in the area of immigration. I've always been proud that the partnership has led in the area of immigration reform. <laughs> With the changing tone and discussion in Washington, we are so well positioned to be a leader and player in this national debate. It's something our economy, our community, I should say, simply must address. So clearly, just as the scope of our imagining effort must be broad, it must also be inclusive in every respect. And I hope all of you are prepared to engage in this discussion and to help us draw others to the table. Now let me turn briefly to my final topic, which is the year ahead. While 2013 will be a year of imagining and redesign, it will also be a year of execution of critical tasks. For example, we must successfully complete the Opportunity Houston 2.0 campaign, which will provide the funds needed to extend this vital program through the year 2020. Drayton McLean and his campaign cabinet are leading the effort to raise $40 million, and I'm pleased to report that we have raised 13.2 million in pledges to date. Thank you. Your support of Opportunity Houston 2.0 is simply vital to our efforts to continue to bring high paying jobs to Houston and to accomplish the branding, skilled worker, attraction, and workforce development goals we've set. Turning to the legislative session currently underway in Austin, we are already taking steps to advance our legislative agenda. This session, the partnership is focused on six key areas, education and workforce development, transportation, energy, health care, economic development, and quality of life. We've already begun discussions with our local delegation and have, we've shared our agenda with them. We'll be asking many of you to assist us in Austin during the session. And finally, as Tony mentioned, we will be launching a new workforce development initiative this year 
that builds on the strength of several GHP committees and links to efforts already underway in the community involving employers, community colleges, the Workforce Commission, and others. We look forward to many, involving many of you in this initiative. So we've got plenty to do. But I can say on behalf of the entire staff, we are excited about working with you to accomplish this near-term agenda. Tony, I'd like to thank you again for your leadership in 2012. And David, thank you for your commitment to serve as chair of the board. I look forward to working with you this year. And I'd also like to thank all of you for your continued support of the Greater Houston Partnership. We couldn't imagine a better Houston if we didn't have such a strong base of support from all of you. Thank you for attending the partnership's annual meeting. Please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.